Not long ago, a subscriber asked a very valid question. How do you use a prop object to drive the animation of the hands in a cat rig? In a situation where a character is holding an object, you may want to animate that object and have the cat rig react to that motion. This could be used, for example, in a scenario where a character is holding a sword two-handed. You would want to be able to animate or pose the sword in such a way that the hands react to that motion. Of course, you'd also need to have control over the prop and how and when it affects the limbs. For example, at some point in the animation, you may want the sword to only affect one hand while the other hand is doing something different. This is what you'll explore in this tutorial. To keep things simple, you won't be using any character mesh, only a cat rig and a prop object in the form of a handgun. The animation complexity will also be kept at a bare minimum. Essentially, you only need three major poses. One is the initial caution pose with a two-handed grip on the gun. Another is with the gun pointing left, as the character hears a sound from that direction. The grip is still two-handed at that time. And the third pose is based on a body twist and a single-handed grip as the character hears a sound from the opposite side. Creating this animation will help you learn how to release control from a two-handed to one-handed grip. In a new scene, make sure your system units are set to inches. This is important for scaling as you later merge the handgun into the scene. Create a cat parent rig based on the base human template. As you click and drag to create it, keep an eye on the cat units ratio. A ratio of about 0.75 creates a rig for a 6 foot human figure approximately 180 centimeters. In order to pose this character at frame 0, you first need to create an animation layer. With any part of the cat rig selected, go to the motion panel. Add an absolute layer and enable animation mode. To pose the rig in a caution stance, start by bringing the pelvis down a bit to relax the knees. Adjust the position and rotation of the feet and legs into a pose that you like. Add a bit of rotation to the pelvis and spine. Before you merge in the handgun, make some slight adjustments to the hands. Don't worry too much about getting it perfect at this time. You'll need to adjust it later. When your character is in a decent stance, save your file to the same folder that contains the handgun model you downloaded for this tutorial. Merge in the handgun model. Using the Align tool, align the gun to the right hand, pivot to pivot, in position and orientation in all three axes. You will still need to locally rotate the gun 180 degrees around the Y axis. Use the Angle Snap tool, A on the keyboard, to rotate snap in 5 degree increments. Use the Move tool in local space to fine tune the position of the gun in relation to the hand. Of course, at this time, moving the gun around has no effect on the hands yet. You're about to change that. Select the right hand. In fact, you can select any bone on the right arm limb. Go to the Motion panel and expand Limb Animation. Click on Create IK Target. A gizmo resembling a point helper appears. Click the Select IK Target button to select the gizmo. This is easier than clicking on it in the viewport. It's also good practice to use the Move IK Target to Palm option to make sure the target is in the proper position. In this case it is, but there's no harm in using this option to ensure that fact. At this time, moving the target around still has no effect on the arm. 
This is because the IK-FK blending is favoring the FK solution. Bring that slider all the way to the left to favor the IK solution. Now the IK target affects the hand and the arm. At this point, you could link the target to the handgun so that it follows it. However, you may want to lose that link later on in the animation. Perhaps the character is meant to drop the gun, or maybe put it in a holster. Either way, you may want to control the arm after the gun has served its purpose. Maybe the arm will react to another object. Maybe the character is to grab another gun. So instead of a straight link between the IK target and the gun, you'll use link constraint. With this option, you can switch parents on the fly. With the IK target still selected, expand the assigned controller rollout. Expand the first level, layer trans, and select the animation layer track. Click the Assign Controller button and select Link Constraint from the list and click OK. Make sure you are at frame 0. In the new Link Parameters rollout that appears, click Add Link and then click the handgun in the viewport. Click Add Link again to disable that mode. Notice the new entry specifying the gun as apparent at frame 0. Sure enough, move the gun around and notice how the hand moves with it. Bring the left hand closer to the handgun. You are trying to simulate a two-handed grip at the beginning of the animation. You may want to disable angle snap if it's still active. Repeat the procedure with the left hand. With the left hand selected, create an IK target. Select it. Move the target to the palm. Set its blending mode to full IK. Assign a Link Constraint controller to the animation layer. And specify the gun as apparent at frame 0. Don't forget to exit Add Link mode when done. Verify that the motion of the gun affects both hands and arms. Adjust the pose a little bit. A slight rotation of the upper arms would help in this instance. Save your file. In the next movie, you'll animate the rig.